Okay, so um, so our next topic is optimization. So what we um, optimization, all it really is, uh, we already talked about how to find um, local maximums and minimums, right? And then we found talked about how to find absolute maximums and minimums. You guys remember that? Okay, so this is basically just an application of that. So basically, we're finding typically absolute maximums and minimums. Um, the difference is that typically when we're finding absolute maximums and minimums, remember almost always we had a closed interval. Um, with optimization, often you have an open interval. So it's just a little bit um, tricky. But I mean, as usual, the hardest part is kind of setting, getting it all set up and all the little things. So the calculus part is not really that difficult. It's the setting up part that is difficult because there are a lot of different um, uh, situations. But as with anything, just practice, you know? So I'll give you the, a good kind of strategy overall, how to approach it, and then um, we'll try to do as many examples as we can. Yeah? Okay. All right. So uh, let's say uh, we have this rectangular field. So we're going to do number uh, three here that we have on the right screen. So um, we have rectangular field um, bounded by a fence on three sides and by a stream on the fourth side. Find the dimensions of the field with a maximum area that can be enclosed using 1,000 feet of fence. Okay, so let's draw a picture because that's the first step anyways. Okay, so what's that? That's, that's the stream, right? <laughs> okay, and then we're going to build a rectangular field. So it's going to look like that, right? Um, with three sides. Uh, let's label these something. Um, how about uh, y for this side and then x for this side? Does that sound good? Reasonable? Okay. Um, and then notice we have 1,000, one more zero, 1,000 feet of fence. And then the question is what's the max area? Okay, so we're looking at problem number three. All right, so does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to close it up so that we have all the space. All right, so um, so if you kind of, I mean, if you just sort of think about, so you have a thousand feet of fence, right, and um, and you want to uh, make it so that it's you have the most area possible. Well, um, if you kind of, for example. Uh, so you don't have to necessarily write this down, but this is just kind of thinking out loud. So like for example, if you had a really uh, long skinny fence where this was one foot, this was one foot, and this is 998 feet, what's the area of that? That's 998 square feet, right? And then if you have, uh, let's say you have one where it's, Oh, I don't know, 500 and then 250. Or maybe just to make the numbers a little bit even easier to work with, I can do 600 and then what would the sides be? 200, 200, right? So the same amount of fencing, right? But uh, what's the area in this case? 12 with one, two, three, four zeros, right? What is that? That's so compare the amount of the square footage. That's is that more or less? That's way more. Right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there's an optimum. Yeah, there's an optimum length and width here that we really want, right, to maximize the area. So it's neither of the two, uh, but but it definitely matters which one it is, right? Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna use calculus to figure out exactly what the um, optimum uh, area is. You know. <laughs> Okay, so, um, all right, so step one. What do you guys think step one is? We just did, exactly. Draw a picture, that's right. Okay, good job. All right, so the strategy when you're doing this almost always is identical. Um, I'll point out those spots where it's a little bit different maybe, but uh, for the most part, it's, it's pretty much the same. So first thing is draw a picture. Draw a picture and label. Okay, 
Now the second thing you want to do, um, and one of the big things that uh, you need to be careful, don't confuse it with the related rate step, right? So the steps sometimes kind of sound similar, so you kind of start doing the same thing. So, but it's a little bit different. Okay, so this step is one of the absolute most important steps. Okay. Um, write a formula for the function you are optimizing. Okay, so this is key. All right, now, what is it that I am optimizing? The area, exactly. Notice, when we were doing related rates, what did we say? We wanted to find a formula that relates our information. Just pick a formula that relates, that has your information that you have. This is not the same thing. Here, you're saying, okay, what is it that I'm trying to optimize? Am I trying to optimize the perimeter or the area? In this case, it's the area, right? So, so these two are connected. So max area, area. Now, um, area is a function of what? It's a function of x and y, right? Okay, so what is the area equal to? Nope. How do I find the area? Oh, yeah, x times y, yes. Is that what you guys said? I thought you said 1,000. Okay, anyways, it's x times y. Um, now, uh, if you look at that, and you think, okay, well, I'm trying to maximize the area, right? And, um, and I have the formula for the area function, which is x times y. Um, and you then think of the calculus that you know, and you go, well, I know how to find the maximum of a function, but what's the difference with this function? There's two variables, right? Do I know how to find the derivative of maximum or anything like that of a function of two variables? No. What is this class called? Single variable calculus. <laughs> okay. So multivariable calculus, that is calculus three. So we are not doing multivariable calculus. We're doing single variable calculus. So only one variable. So this, there should only be one variable. So uh, that's not a problem. That's just the next step is all. So uh, you, you're going to use the constraint. You're always going to have some kind of a constraint. Um, so you're going to use the constraint to write the function as a single variable. as a, with a, with a single variable. Okay, so, um, all right, so you need to figure out some kind of relationship between the variables that you have. So what is my constraint? Well, if you go back to your information, it's the thousand feet of fencing, right? This is what you're constrained by. So that's your, your constraint. Um, it's not always a specific number. Sometimes it's a relationship. Uh, it, it just kind of depends. But it's some way for you to relate the, the two variables that you have so that you can write one in terms of the other. Okay. So um, 1,000 feet of fence, what measurement is that? That's a measure of, yeah, it's feet. So it would be, in this case, the perimeter, right? So it's the amount of fence you have, right? Okay, so my constraint then is that 1,000 is equal to two y's and one x, right? Two y plus one x. Okay, so then you can use this if you solve for x, so or you solve for y, whatever you want. Um, Typically, you kind of look at it and think about what would be easier. In this one, it's not really that uh, much different. Uh, let's solve for x since it doesn't have a number in front. Uh, so x would equal to 1,000 minus 2y, right? 
and take a wild guess what you're going to do with this. Plug it in, right? Okay. So if I do that, I'm going to get so my new area function. This time, the area is only going to be a function of y, right? And what is that going to equal to? It's going to be 1,000 minus 2y times y. Does that make sense? Uh, and you can even maybe simplify it a little bit further. 1,000 uh, y minus 2y squared. Might even be better. Okay. All right, so questions. Does that make sense? Okay. So step four is um, optimize. Um, and here, maybe I'll just put a little note here. So if, if the uh, interval, or let's say if the domain is an open interval, use the FDT. What is the FDT? First derivative test. Uh, if it is closed, then what do you do when you're finding the absolute maximum or minimum of a, on a closed interval? You test the value at the endpoints and compare it with the value at the critical points, right? Okay, so if it is uh, closed, then compare the value at the endpoints versus critical points. Okay. All right. So, um, so the thing is, for example, here I have, um, so just to kind of think about it a little bit, um, what's the domain? It's not all real numbers. What's the smallest y can be? So y is the width of the fence, right? Can the width be 0? No, because then you wouldn't have a fence, right? Can it be 1? Yes. Can it be less than 1? Theoretically, right? Obviously, if it's 0.1, well, that's not going to be a very useful uh, area, <laughs> no matter how big it is. But Theoretically, it could be less than one. How small can it be? Theoretically, it could be. Yeah, I mean, it, so you can get it as close to zero as you want without actually getting to zero, right? So the domain is actually between zero and what? One thousand, but not including a thousand, right? So the the biggest it can be is well, actually not a thousand because it's the uh, it's the width and it's divided by because you have to have enough for both sides, right? So it would actually be let me do it in an interval notation because I don't have enough room. So it would be five hundred, right? But open again. Right? Because can it be, for example, can it equal 500, the number 500? Well, no, because then you would have 500 on one side, 500 on the other. That's 1,000 feet of fence. Where's the, where's the, where would, would the length be, right? So you have, it has to be less than 500. If it's less than 500, let's say it's four, 499. Well, 499 on one side, 499 on the other leaves you with two feet for the, for the length, right? Well, it's not a very good fence, but it's possible, right? And then, well, it could be 499 and a half, right? Okay, all right. So anyways, uh, so 
Okay, so that that's that's the note there. Okay, so um, okay, so hopefully we have enough room here. I hope. All right. So how do I find the maximum? We find the. So I guess question: Am I going to use the first derivative test, or am I going to use the? Um, what do we call? It? I don't think we called it anything. Um, what do we call that? Uh, technique for finding the absolute maximum minimum on a closed interval. We should call these something. What should we call them? Well, FDT and what should we call the second one? Uh, let's call it. Any ideas? How about C I T, the closed interval test? <laughs> okay, anyways, whatever you call it, it doesn't matter. Okay, anyways, all right, so what should we do? Regardless of which uh, technique we're going to use, what should we do? Derivative, right? Okay, so first derivative. So find the critical points, right? So A prime of Y, what is that? That's 1,000 minus 4y, right? So what's the critical points? <coughs> so we set 1,000 minus 4y equal to 0. So we get y is equal to 250, right? So uh, my only one and only critical point is y equals 250, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, since I don't have a closed interval, let's do the first derivative test here. So do you guys remember what we do? We do the number line, right? We put 250 here. And then... This is between 0 and 500, right? Okay, so what would be a good test point? Yeah, don't like 249. Remember, we're going to plug it in. So think of something something easy to plug in. 1, perfect. Perfect, 1. I like it. What about bigger than 250? How about 400? That looks easy, right? Nice, nice round numbers there. Okay, so what's a prime at one? Positive or negative? Positive, right? And a prime at four hundred. That's going to be negative, right? So just a, a little note here: um, when you're picking your test points. The farther away you go from your critical point, the easier it'll it'll be to tell whether it's positive or negative. Because if you think about it, if you're close to your critical point, that means, remember at the critical point, typically it's equal to zero, right? So if you're close to the critical point, that means that your ant what the number you're going to get when you test is going to be close to zero, so it's harder to tell. But for example there, if we plug in 400, it's pretty easy to tell it's going to be negative right, right away, right? Because 1,000 minus 1,600, right? Well, that's negative for sure. Whereas if you plug in 251, well, it's like, oh, well, I don't know. You know, you get to calculate it out. And multiply 251 times 4, which I mean, it's not hard, but you know, you know what I mean. Anyways, okay. So uh, what does this mean? That means that it's increasing here and then it's decreasing there, right? So where's the maximum? At 250, right? So this is the. So uh, let's see. Max when y equals 250. Does that make sense? Yeah? 
So if we go back to the original question, here, let me see. The original question was find the dimensions. Okay, so I just want to make sure. So uh, what are the dimensions that maximize the area? So notice it's not asking us for the maximum area. It's asking us for the dimensions that maximize the area. So what, is, what are those dimensions? So 250 on the sides, right? And then what would be the, the bottom, the length? It would be 500, right? So 250, 250, and then the length 500. And what is the maximum area? Well, it would just be 500 times 250, right? What is that? One twenty-five with three zeros. What was the other one that we found? One hundred and twenty, right? So it's a little bit better than what we came up with. Um, square feet, two fifty feet, five hundred feet. Okay, so to recap, draw a picture, right? Uh, write a formula. Very important. The second step is probably the most important one. Um, because if you don't get the second step right, then everything you do after is going to be wrong. The third step is typically the hardest when it's complicated. Um, but it's to use your constraint to write it as a single variable, write the function as a single variable. And then the last step is just to optimize, which is just doing the stuff that we already uh, knew from before. Um, and uh, just be a little bit careful. If you, I mean, typically it's, on almost all these, it's um, you'll find one critical point and then you'll optimize it and it'll be that one critical point. Uh, but occasionally there will be endpoints and then one of the endpoints would be the uh, maximum or minimum. So um, you do want to make sure that you check. Um, and then keep in mind if it's, so don't get confused, if it's an open interval, then you're not going to plug in um, the endpoint, right? You'll just do the first derivative test to make sure that it is what what you're looking for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions? No. Okay. Let's do another one here. Let's see. Yes. Go ahead. When you're solving to figure out the absolute maximum. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, the thing is that at that point, so yeah, so the question is, um, why can't you just be done here where you found the critical point? And the answer is, if you're doing an optimization problem and you only found one critical point, um, unless the question was made up to in a way trick you then it's going to be at that one critical point um, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't check you know so like for example what if okay let's say you're going through this right and you get 250 and then you're like oh I'm done but then you realize well you do this and then you plug it in, right? And you get this, for example. Well, what is that telling you? Well, what does that mean? So then what would be the maximum? Well, why not zero? It can't be 500. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, no, the, I mean, the, uh, the real answer is because it's coming from, from a textbook meant to teach students calculus. Uh, because, for example, if I, let's say I gave you this question, Again, I have my problem here again. Let's say I, I kept everything exactly the same, but instead I did, I asked you, what's the 
what's the minimum area? <clears throat> so everything exactly the same. So you have the fence, the same amount of fence, you have the stream and all that stuff. The only difference is the question is, okay, well, what's the minimum area? Well, if you got the question, what would you do? You would start getting to work on answering the question, right? So you would go through exactly the same steps. You would find the function, you would do this step, and then you would get here, and then you would get to, okay, so we're, we're here, right? So you get to the critical point, and you say, oh, well, I'm done. It's 250, that's the minimum. Is that the minimum, though? No, but if you stop here, so if you stop right there, would you know that that's not the minimum? No, you would be thinking, oh, well, I only found one critical point, so that must be what it is, right? But it's not the minimum at all. Uh, so if you kept going, you would say, oh, well, actually, it's a maximum. Well, uh, hmm, well, what does that mean? So again, going back to learning calculus, if you're taking a class in calculus and you're going from a textbook in calculus, you're not going to get these kinds of questions because it's a bad question. I mean, what would be the answer to the question? What is the minimum area? Nope. Doesn't exist. Because you can keep getting closer and closer to zero or closer and closer to 500. The area keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It approaches zero, but it never actually reaches zero. So the minimum area does not exist. So. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. So, but so if this happens to you, let's say you're doing this and it happens to like it actually does happen to you, like you're doing a problem in the, from the book, and you get something weird like it's asking asking for the maximum and you found the minimum. What's the most likely scenario? No. You made you messed up. Yeah, you made a mistake. Really. <laughs> that's the most likely scenario. <laughs> yeah. So that's another good reason to to check. Um, okay, all right. <laughs> Are you guys ready for another one? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. How about... Um, oh, the wire one is it's a great one. Great problem. Oh, one of my favorites. Problem 14 here, such a good one. <laughs> because notice, what is it asking us for? Problem 14, what's the question? Maximum and a minimum in one problem. What? Wowzers, wowzers. Okay, are you guys ready for the wire problem? <laughs> okay, so uh, let's see here. So it says that a wire of length 12 inches can be bent into a circle, a square, or cut into two pieces to make both a circle and a square. Wow. <laughs> How much wire should be used for the circle <laughs> if the total area enclosed by the figure is to be a maximum or a minimum? Okay, so let's draw a wire. Now, um, the wire, it says it's 12 inches, right? Um, and then, uh, so from this wire, we're gonna cut it. Let's say you cut it right there, right? And when you cut it, you'll have two pieces. And you're going to make a circle and a square. Or use all of it to make one, just a circle, cir circle, or all of it to make just a square, right? Does that make sense? OK. Um, and then what's the question? Um, so we want to find the max, max uh, total area, right? All right, does that make sense? 
Okay. All right. So uh, there's our there's our problem. So um. All right. So we still so the first step is to draw a picture and then label everything, right? So we need a label. Put some x's and y's in here, or a's and b's, or z's and q's, or whatever letter. X and y is good. Um, so what should we call x and what should we call y? Um, you mean like this? Well, so you kind of have two options. You can do like this, x, x. Like that, right? What would what would the uh, the uh, red line be then? Mm -mm. It would be four x, right? Does that make sense? Um, and then and then here, I mean, it just depends. So, like for example, if you do. Uh, if this is y, then what's the blue line? It would be y, right? Um, but that's the circumference. So like you would have y is equal to 2 pi r. But you might want to instead say, well, what if the radius is y? Then what would be the length of the blue? It would be 2y. 2 pi r, 2 pi y, right? So, <laughs> so anyway, so I mean, it, it just, it's a matter of, uh, so it doesn't really matter, uh, just some choices are better than others for uh, simplifying purposes. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I think that's probably okay. What do you guys think? Um, okay, so uh, let's do the next step, and then and then we can always go back and relabel it if we feel like it's not a good it's not a good fit, you know. Uh, so uh, what's the second step? Okay, so what are we optimizing? We're optimizing the area so the area is the area of the square plus the area of the circle yes all right so uh, if I write this down here what's the area of the square what is it mm -mm. that's the length of the line that that's the perimeter of the square x squared right yeah. What's the area of the circle? <laughs> well, so look at this right here, right? So the radius, so the area of the circle is pi r squared, right? Well, what's r? Well, it's y over 2 pi, no? In, in, it depends on at what point you wrote it down, right? Because I suggested two different things. So so if I leave it like this, then it would be y over 2 pi, right? Um, if I make the radius y, well, then the length of the line of the, y, of the blue wire would be 2 pi y. Uh, so... So you guys want to leave it like that? That's fine. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. OK, all right. Um, so <laughs> let's simplify it a little bit. So we have x squared plus. Uh, so notice I have pi and then pi uh, squared here. So that's going to give me y squared over 4 pi on the bottom, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so, all right, so now what do I do? Oh, 
then use our constraint, right? So step three, right? Use our constraint because notice we have area as a function of x and y, so that's no good. So we need it as a function of just x or just y. So what is my constraint? The, the wire is 12 inches, right? That's my constraint. So, um, okay, so that's, that's good. Um, so how would I write that down then? 12 equals to what? What's an equation that I can write down with the 12? 4x, 4x plus 1y, right? Where did I get that from? I got that from right here, right? So that's how I, separ I separated my wire. Uh, so the red is 4x, the blue is y. So the total length 12 is equal to 4x plus uh, 1y. Okay, so do you guys want to solve for y or do you guys want to solve for x? Y looks a little bit better, no? Because if I solve for Y, notice I get, because if you solve for X, then you're going to have to divide by 4. So, um, <laughs> what is it? Well, but then you would have Y divided by 4 still. Because the 12 over 4, that's, that's fine. That's 3. But then you'll still have a Y over 4. <laughs> And then, and then you have to square it, right? So then you have a fraction. I mean, it doesn't, uh, you know, minor, minor details, really. Uh, it's not going to save us that much, really. Okay, so y is 12 minus 4x. So then um, the area is equal to x squared plus, and then instead of y squared, I'm going to have, 12 minus 4x quantity squared all over 4 pi, like that. OK, so that's not too bad. It's not terrible. I've seen worse. All right, so any questions so far? Okay, all right. So uh, what should I do next? What's step four? I did step three, right? Optimize, Optimize right? Uh, am I going to use FDT or CIT? First derivative test or closed interval test? Closed interval. Be, how do I know that it's a it's a closed interval? Well, okay. So what's the domain of a? What's the smallest a can be? Can x so can x be zero? It can. How do I know that x can be zero? Because it because that's exactly what that's what the problem says, right? Notice it says. Uh, 12 inches can be bent into a circle, bent into a square, or make both a circle and a square, right? So that means you can use the entire wire to make just a square if you want, or just a circle if you want, right? So that is allowed. So that's how I know that, um, that I'm going to have endpoints. So um, in this case, so x can be as small as 0, right? And why am I doing x? Well, that's because that's the function that I have, right? My function is a is a function of x, so I'm writing down the domain as a function of x. Does that make sense? The domain of a, which is a function of x at this point. OK, what's the? Now, you have to be careful here, though. Be very careful. So. Um, this all depends on how you set it up initially. So um, zero is the smallest x could be, which means that I would use the entire wire for what? For Yeah, for y, for the circle, right? So x equals zero is only circle, right? What would be only square? Exactly. 
Notice it's not 12, right? It's 3. Right, so you have to be a little bit careful not, not to, you know, kind of jump ahead and say, oh, well, it's just 12 because that's the entire wire. Well, no, because X represents something. In this case, X is the length of the side of the square, right? And the largest X can be is 3, right? Because if you go past 3, well, now you have more, you're using more than 12 inches, which is not possible, right? Does that make sense? Okay, all right, so now uh, what do I do after that? Find the, right, so now I'm, I'm doing all my derivative stuff, right? So I have uh, a prime of x, so what is that? That's going to be 2x plus 2, 12 minus 4x. Uh, over 4 pi. What am I missing? Doing the chain roll, right? So what am I missing? Times the derivative of the inside, which is minus 4, right? Okay, so that, that looks pretty good. Um, so I can reduce things a little bit. The 4 reduces with the four. Um, so let's see. So I'm gonna have uh, two X. Uh, so notice I have a minus right here and then this two. So if I distribute, notice the signs are gonna change, right? Because I have that negative. So it's gonna be two X minus 24 and then plus 8x, right? Does that make sense? Yes, over pi, yep. Oh, why did I write 10? I don't know. Over pi. Um, all right, so now what do I do? Set equal to zero, right, and solve. So, Okay, we can do that. Um, so what would I have? I would have, if I, let's say, I mean, it depends on how you prefer to, what if I uh, multiply both sides by pi? Get rid of it, yeah? So then I would have 2x pi minus 24 plus 8x equals zero. So then 2x pi plus 8x is 24. And then what? what uh, I don't know. No, it was plus, right? Because we distributed the minus earlier. OK, so then what? What's my next step? Factor out an x, right? And then what do I have? 2 pi plus 8? OK, so that's my critical point. 24 divided by 2 pi plus 8. Or probably easier, 12 over pi plus 4, right? All right, so what is that about? So if pi is a 3.14-ish, so 12 over 7. So And that's between 0 and 3, right? Yeah, OK. So that makes sense. So it's in my interval. Um, so notice, can I be done here? <coughs> no, right? I mean, so uh, we have a critical point, but well, for sure it's going to be one of the two, right? It has to be either a minimum or a maximum. Um, I mean, probably, I guess it doesn't have to be, but um, very likely it's going to be one of those two. Um, and, uh, but notice, am I going to do the first derivative test in this case? No, because? 
Yeah, we have a closed interval, right? So it, when I have a closed interval, so it's completely different, right? So I'm going to test. Maybe I shouldn't write test. Maybe I'll write uh, maybe just compare. Compare values at x equals 0, x equals 3, and x equals 2, 12 over pi plus 4, right? So that's what we're going to do. All right, so, and when we say compare the values, we're talking about the value of the function, right? The original function. Notice we're not plugging it into the derivative, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, let's see. So what is a at zero? What is that? So if I plug in zero, zero, what do I get? Okay, uh, what is that about? So about 11.46. Okay, so we write it this way just because uh, we're going to want to compare them. So uh, we want to make sure that we do a good job. Okay, if I plug in 3, what would I get? 9? Oh, yeah, because the whole thing. Okay, so 9. Um, and then 12 over pi plus 4. Okay, there we go. This is going to be the, the winner. Does that look right? That looks right, right? 5.04. That's what it is. That's that's the final. That's the final answer. Five point oh four ish, right? I had it right one of the times. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to see where all the parentheses go. Um, okay, so then what do so then here we have everything we need, right? So so this is the max, right? So what does this correspond to? The max is when you do only circle, right? No square. Only circle is the max. Uh, and then what's the minimum? This is the minimum, right? So the minimum is when x is about. So if I do, if I just find what x is approximately, 1.68 ish, right? Ish. So when the length of the square is 1.68 roughly, uh, that's when the uh, that's when the area is minimized, right? So can we find the minimum area? How do we do that? Let's say you want to find the minimum area. Just go back, right? So here, the area of the square would be what? 12 over pi plus 4 squared, right? Because that's one side, right? X is one side. So this is the minimum, right? Minimum. And then what would be, let's say you wanted to find the minimum, the area, well, the area of the circle that gives you the minimum total area. How would you find that? We don't really have enough space, but how would you find it, theoretically, if you wanted to find out? Mm, no, because that's x. So you'd first have to find y, right? Which is w down here. So th here's y. So if you plug the x value into there, right? 
I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying this is how you would do it. But you would plug in the x value there, right? That would give you y. And then using y, then you can find the area of the circle, right? Yeah, because the area of the circle is this one right here, right? Pi times y over 2 pi squared. So find y and then plug it into that. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's all we've got.